Come on and put your hands together. On your couch, on your sofa, in your car, put your hands together. Cause God is our everything. God is. God is. And he's my joy. And he's my hope. He's my hope for tomorrow. He's my rock. He's my rock. In a weary land. A shelter in time of storm. Oh God is. God is. God is my everything. Oh God is. God is. God is my oh, he's my joy. He's my joy oh, he's my hope. He's my rock in a weary land. A shelter in in the time of storm. Oh, oh God is. God is. My everything. everything. Hey, and God is. God is my everything. God is. God is my everything. He's my joy. He's my joy in sorrow. Oh, now he's my hope. He's my hope for tomorrow. Now he's my rock he's my in a weary land. A shelter in in the time of storm. Oh, God is. God is. God is. I know He is. He'll be right there in the time of storm. In the time of trouble. My God will be right there. Oh, God is. Oh, God is. Anybody know he is? Oh, God is. Hey, God is. God is. God is. Oh, God is. He'll be right there. Oh, yes, he will. Oh, my everything. Hey, my everything. My everything in the time of trouble, he'll be right there. He's my burden bearer, my heavy load carrier. He'll be right there. Oh, God is. He's my everything. He's my everything. He'll be right there in no time of trouble. All you gotta do. Just to keep on trusting him, just to keep on trusting, he'll be right there, he'll be right there. Call on on Jesus, call on on Jesus, call on Jesus. All you got to do is call him, just to call on Jesus. He'll be right there, he'll be right there, he'll see you through. Hello, my name is Bishop Dr. Geraldine Moore and our service is emanating from Highway 70 East 801 UPHC James City 
the church where everybody is somebody, and Jesus Christ is the Lord. Over here where the table is spread, and the feast of the Lord is going on. Our gracious leader is Bishop Dr. Wallace C. Grimes, who is also the Vice Bishop of the Undenominational Pentecostal Holiness Church Incorporated. And right by his side is his lovely wife, the First Lady, Jennifer D. Grimes. Now, I would just like to talk uh, with you this teaching moment from the topic Fight on. From out of Second Timothy, fourth chapter and the seventh verse, it says, "I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course, and I have kept the faith." Sometimes in life, you get tired. You get tired. You get tired. You, 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 you get tired physically. You get tired mentally. And sometimes you are exasperated and, and overwhelmed spiritually. Uh, we, you just, after one problem, after another. When you finish one problem, there's another problem, more problems at the door. But we have to remember that we are soldiers in the army of the Lord. We are warriors. Now, some Christians don't want to be warriors. They want to be laid back, uh, take extended uh, sabbaticals, they want to take it, take it easy. But we weren't called to take it easy. We're in a fight. We are called to fight the good fight of faith. There's a war going on, ladies and gentlemen. It's not against flesh and blood, but it's against principalities, and it's against powers, and it's against rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, let me just say this. Forget about the spiritual in this aspect when it comes to the person that's in the house that's painted white. It's just plain wickedness. And if you can't see that, you're blind. Jeremiah was chosen to be a prophet before he was born. He was chosen to be a prophet in his youth. Uh, he, he was, never had a convert, but he was called to the prophetic. He was never married because of the terrible times that they lived in, but he was, rejected, and he was uh, beaten, and he was put in stocks, and uh, he was hated uh, by his own people. You know, it's, it's sad when you are hated by your own folks. It's one thing to be hated by someone else, but to be hated and rejected by your own people, it's got to be uh, devastating. Uh, but Jeremiah was a man with a tender and compassionate heart. He was commissioned from God to deliver a harsh message of judgment. Uh, he is called the weeping prophet because he weeped numerous times over the spiritual condition, over the condition of, of Judah. And why he wept so much because they had forsaken God. They had begun to burn incense to other gods. And they had begun to give credit to the work of their own hands. So Jeremiah 
had to speak to this issue prophetically for what it was the Lord was giving him uh, to say. Uh, <laughs> it's hard when you speak to people and they don't want to receive what you have to say. It's difficult, especially when you are speaking from your heart what it is God has directed you to say and you are still rejected. That's how it was in Judah. And this was during a time when Jerusalem was headed for destruction and into the Babylonian captivity. Uh, because they refused to hearken to the prophetic sayings of Jeremiah, they had two choices. Either they could live and surrender to the Babylonian king, or they could stay in the city and die. And they chose to surrender to the Babylonian king. Jeremiah just stood there watching as his people, those he loved and cared for, just were marched off into captivity. Now concerning Jeremiah, God has spoken about Jeremiah, told him, say, I knew you before you were formed in the belly of your the womb. Say, I knew you. And I call you. I ordain you to go forth as a prophet to the nations. But uh, Jeremiah, as we often do sometimes, he told the Lord, he said, uh, I'm too young. I, I can't speak. I, I, I can't do this job. But ladies and gentlemen, don't you know that when God calls you for a particular uh, place in ministry, or when he calls you to do a particular thing, he is going to prepare you for that job. He is going to equip you for that service. All we have to do is do what God says to do. Uh, so that's why God was encouraging Jeremiah to let him know, you are not unprepared. In essence, what he was telling me to do, look, shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. I got this. You are prepared. I call you. I ordain you. All you got to do is give the message. And that's how we should be, ladies and gentlemen. Just give the message. Whatever God tells us to do, don't worry about the effect of the message. You just give the message. Uh, I'm not responsible to you. You're not responsible to me in that respect. I would hope that you would like what I have to say. But if you don't, that's not my problem. I am responsible and you are responsible and accountable to God. He is the one who gives us our report on our grace, not man. You are ordained, you have been called as a teacher of what have you in the kingdom. Uh, but Jeremiah, like I said, felt inadequate to do the job, to do the job. But God let him know, you do what I say do. I'm with you, and I will deliver you. That's what we have to keep in mind. Out here as we fight this battle, not against flesh and blood, we have to remember that God is with us. He has not forsaken us, no matter how it looks. And sometimes, no matter how it feels, God is always there with us. It may look like we are in the minority, but with God on our side, we are in the majority. So how would the people react when Jeremiah would come to them with this message? They rejected him. God had told them. That's what they were going to do. They were going to reject him. They were going to refuse the message that Jeremiah was given. That's why Jeremiah up so many times. They wouldn't listen. But God 
still used Jeremiah to proclaim the prophetic message that he had inspired him to do. Uh, so what is your job? Whether it be preaching, teaching, uh, doorkeeper in the house of the Lord, choir member, or deacon, what is your, what is your job? Is it just a job or is it your heart? Is it in your heart? You see what Jeremiah tried to do, he was coming against so much persecution on every hand from the, from the, from the church folks and his family, people that knew him. So he said, I'm just going to resign. I'm going to quit. I'm tired of this fight. I'm just going to give it up. But ladies and gentlemen, don't you know that once you sign up in the kingdom, once you put your name on the roll as a soldier in the battle of the Lord, you are there for eternity. There is no resigning. There is no retiring. We are in this battle, we are in this fight, till death do us part. But then Jeremiah realized, he said, then I said, the word, the word of God was in my heart, not in my bones, it was in my heart as a burning Fire, shut up in my bones. But the word had to be in his heart. He said, I, I, I've kept it long as I can. I've hidden, haven't said anything, because I said I wouldn't say nothing else in his name. Wouldn't call his name, wouldn't say his name. But it was just like as of a fire burning in my heart, and I couldn't hold my peace any longer. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have the word in your heart, really have the word in your heart, you can't keep it to yourself. You've got to say something sometime to somebody about the Lord. And Jeremiah realized that, that he couldn't resign. So he had to do what the Lord told him to do. And just like you and I, we have to do what the Lord says do. Fight on in spite of the condition or the suggestion or the circumstance or the issue. We have a fight, spiritual fight. But ladies and gentlemen, we also are engaged in a social fight. Listen to me. All Christians, you are not just only a saint of God, but you are a citizen of the United States of America. And we are in a social fight for our very life, our very existence. It's a civil matter. Yes, you may say, well, Geraldine, uh, the, the protests and all is not going to change anything. We still got to fight on. Had people not protested and walked and were slain and killed and hung and murdered, that you and I might have some of the privilege that we have right now, why should I stay home and not vote? We got to fight on socially. We got to fight on. Spiritually, because as a believer, I believe you can't separate, you can't separate your social rights from your spiritual rights. Not be, and not be engaging. Because God is interested in the total man, not just our, our spiritual aspect. Somebody say hallelujah. There will be times 
when you have to fight through darkness in in um Kings and second first Kings nineteen, Elijah had just confronted was exhausted from confronting the uh, Baal and the prophets. He was exhausted. And in fear for his life, he ran to the wilderness. And in the wilderness, he became depressed. He was alone, became depressed. Jezebel had said that she would kill him. So he ran for his life. You see, you see the dichotomy about this is God had just performed one of the greatest miracles on Mount Carmel when 450 of Jezebel prophets were defeated. And right after that, here comes Jezebel going to kill him. You see, we are prepared. We, we, we prepare ourselves, we train ourselves for the battle, but what we fail to do is prepare ourselves for the day after the battle. Because sometimes your high, after your high comes your low. Many times you can find yourself up on the mountaintop at one time and you can find yourself down in the valley the next. Does that mean you are not a, a child of God? No, that's just your humanity. So that's what happened to uh, Elijah. He got depressed in his fight. He got depressed, went out in the wilderness, asked to die. He got so depressed. But look at this scenario. God did not come down hard on, Jerem, on Elijah because of the predicament that he was in at that time. God was compassionate. He bought him food. He bought him drink and told him, go on with your journey. Sometime later, Jim, we get tired. And God sends somebody along to refresh our spirit. And then one thing Elijah forgot during this time, and sometimes we forget sometimes that we are not the only frogs in the pond. God has other people that like he told Jeremiah, I got over 7,000 that have not bowed to Baal. So what we have to do in this fight, we have to take the chip up our shoulder, thinking we are all of that, and run and do battle that God has called us to do. Uh, the fight in life, you're high and you're low. In this situation, it just goes to show that even though we may be mature Christians, spiritually mature, say, there may come a time that you become depressed. I can truly say that because I've been there. I know what it is to be depressed. But I can report victory just like you can. Christ rose from the dead, and because Christ rose from the dead, had victory over the grave, I have victory also. Some way and somehow, God brings us out successfully if we just, beloved, if we just hold on and keep on fighting. Keep on fighting the good fight of faith. Uh, we, uh, we have become uh, maintenance people. What happens is we maintain, we maintain, uh, we maintain our cars, we maintain our houses, we maintain our nails, we maintain our hair and our clothes. And so when we get through all this natural maintenance, a lot of times there is no quality time left for God. 
That's a fight. You got to fight on. You got to fight on to spend quality time. We have to fight on and spend quality time with the Lord. And don't let nothing and nobody rob you of that time that we need to spend with the Lord. Whenever you take on a new position or you take on a new job, don't just count the money. Count the cost. Not just the money, but count the time. We have to fight on, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing is going to come easy. This battle is not yours. It's not mine, but it belongs to the Lord. We walk by faith, whether it's hard or easy, and sometimes it gets hard to walk by faith. And anybody that tell you that it don't get hard, you better take another look. Look them dead in the eye and say, will you please repeat what you just said? Sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, it gets hard to fight the good fight of faith. But we have to do it, and we can do it, because God has equipped us to do it. We need to look up, because help is on the way. <laughs> Focus on the Lord, because he died that I may have life, and have life more abundantly. Uh, because the devil is not going to sit by idly while you tiptoe through the tulips, getting the benefits of your faith and belief in Jesus Christ. Oh no, he's going to pressure you with hardships to see what you made of, to see what you made of. Or do you really trust the Lord? Is he really your savior? Is he really your provider? He's going to put that to the test. As long as we stand strong, as long as we keep on fighting on for the Lord, we win. Every time we win. We got to keep marching. Keep on marching by faith. Keep on marching. Keep on reading and meditating on the word of God. And continue doing good. Doing what we know to do. And then it's not always what you know, but it's what you do with what you know. Faith without works is dead. So we have the faith, but you got to have the works. You got to do something. You have got to do something, ladies and gentlemen. If you do, if we hold on to the Lord, with the Lord, we will not be defeated. Uh, you may have, you may, it's no denying, you, you're going to have experiences, temporary sit, setbacks. But it, mess, it just may be a setback for a setup so you can come back. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. A setup for a setback so you can come back. And I mean, come back victoriously. And when life, when your life on this earth is done, you will be able to say, like our scripture text said, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. I finished my course. Hallelujah. And God can say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Free at last, free at last. Thank God I'm money. I'm free at last. Now, if you heard this message and you're not free in your spirit, spiritually, you want to be saved, repeat these words after me. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner, and I am in need of your help. Please forgive me for all my sins. I sincerely repent and ask you,
to accept me. Lord, I'm going to live for you. The balance of my days. I believe in you, Lord. I believe in Jesus. And I believe that you say, whosoever will call, and Lord, I'm calling Jesus. Jesus. Whosoever would call on the name of the Lord would be saved. If you said that sincerely, welcome to the family of God. Now, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and give you love, give you peace, and give you happiness. In Jesus' name, I will soon come in King. Amen. UPHC Church Family and Friends, your tithes and offerings and also donations can be sent by way of Cash App, PayPal, Payment Methods, or in the description. Join us for relevant biblical studies with informative topics via lectures and transforming teachings streaming every Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Have a blessed week. Folks without homes out in the streets and the drug habit some say they just can't be muggers and robbers no place seems to be safe but it could be my protection every As viewed here today, McAfee Tech is here for all your technical needs. Please contact us at 252-349-0180.